Hey everyone, and welcome back to Beyond Real Estate with Jalen and Nick, aka Jalik. Today on the Real Estate Roundup, we're going to be talking about our big companies buying too much real estate. So a recent article from the New York Times uh, talked about why it is getting even rockier for first time home buyers. And in that they cite things such as this interesting statistic. Real estate investors bought a record 18.4% of the homes that were sold in the United States in the fourth quarter of 2021. And that's up from 12% a year earlier. So during this time of crisis and shortages of homes and no one can find an affordable house, what's going on? Companies are doubling down and buying even more properties. So this is something that we're going to talk about. And uh, Nick, I'll, I'll give you uh, the, the first chance just to kind of give your initial thoughts. And then uh, I think we're going to dive into... I'll uh, talk about why these evil devil corporations uh, shouldn't be doing this and how they are just destroying the American dream. And it uh, sounds like you might have some alternative viewpoints. So uh, yeah, what's your first thought when, when you see that, those kind of headlines? I think that's the country we live in. It's capitalism, right? It's the freedom of choice, mm -hmm. the freedom to make decisions, the freedom to make decisions on, on what you feel is the best investment. And I don't, I'm, I don't know that restricting people the the choice that if they they meaning of a corporation feels like real estate is a great space to invest in how do you realistically reel that back in i, I think is where my first thought goes number two uh, traditionally they've occupied in around 15 percent on a national level anyway so for that percentage to be 18 ish percent yeah it's it's a little bit more than quote unquote, the, the norm or their average. Nonetheless, it's not over 50%, right? Um, so it doesn't make it competitive. Certainly it does. Um, I think the other reality is corporations have the luxury to, to make calculated decisions on where they choose to buy, right? You, you look at a corporation like McDonald's, they're very calculated to be on corners as much as possible from a real estate standpoint, why? Because you have exposure on two ends, right? Um, so when it comes yeah. to big corporations buying single family homes, they look to do a more calculated versus just throw something on the wall and hope it sticks, right? I think a lot of uh, first time home buyers, a lot of people that are looking to buy their, maybe a second home, a third home, it's not necessarily as calculated because their pockets aren't as deep, right? Maybe yeah. they don't have the all cash opportunities. So I think that's another thing that comes with the bigger corporations, um, it is, is those calculated buys. So with that being said, Jay, what, what are your, what are your thoughts for why big corporations are destroying, um, hearing that in and around 15% is a norm. Yeah. Well, I, I also, so there's a few things that I want to touch on as to why it is more harmful than even those initial numbers seem. So if you're like, well, they only buy hmm, about one out of every 10, you know, that's not too bad. Um, I would disagree with that because these larger corporations are also doing this for a long-term play and they are going to either only sell high when the market's at its peak, um, or they're going to do things that, which is, this is also destroying a lot of, uh, aspects of what it used to mean to own a home and that is, uh, short-term rentals. So they are completely taking that house now out of the long-term rental market. So now you have an increase in rents. You have them now buying all of the houses or a lot of those houses holding on to them for a good amount of times so that they can actually make a return on their money because they're not just going to buy this for a year and unless it's a fix and flip, which have been around forever. And those aren't the ones I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, I'm okay. talking about people that are going into a neighborhood, buying up a couple dozen, uh, properties now, and then either renting those out or turning those into short-term rentals. If they're in a desirable location for short-term rentals, which Denver, California, basically any major city is. And so all of these houses are now being taken effectively off the housing market in its entirety, whether that's renting out to the locals, um, or, uh, being on the market for someone to buy, they're being turned into these short-term rentals. 
and these corporations are going to hold on to them for a longer period of time so that they can make a good return on their money. But Jay, yeah, do you think house every prices and along the along the way as well? But. Okay, so do you think everybody's American dream is to own a home though? Um, I think it's it's definitely a part of it, right? It's it's that full autonomy is when you can own your own property. Yeah, but do you think everybody has those aspirations? You're, I, I know a couple people that say I'd never want to own a home because I don't want to be tied down. They want to yeah. rent. They prefer to rent because they want that flexibility of lifestyle to say I could go up and move to Seattle next week because my rental contract's up. I can I can go out east and live in Chicago uh, in May 2023 because I don't like California. Um, yeah. So what, no, absolutely. So do you it, think it, that that's a big issue? Knowing that. Yeah, I think it still plays into it because again, these, the, unless those people are now going to go from one place to another, to another, to another and rent for only a few weeks at a time, a month at a time, which there's those people that can do that, but when, also yearly, but just take sure. a year lease. But, but just like I was saying earlier, though, you still have these people that, uh, when these companies buy these big houses and they either use them for short-term rentals is the worst case scenario, or if they just take it off the market completely, that's now going to drive a higher demand for rental properties, which now those people are even affected because now if they do want to move to Seattle, well, rent in Seattle's gone up for, you know, another couple hundred bucks a month versus what it would have been otherwise. So it really does affect everyone. But do you um, think that rent went up because it's a business or don't like if you own that property in Seattle, wouldn't you have probably ri risen the rates based on what you can get for a three bed, two bath house? Yep. So what does yep. it matter if an individual owns it versus a corporation? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the bigger thing is, and, and you referred to it, a deeper pockets. So a single individual isn't going to be buying up a whole neighborhood. I mean, I know that's an exaggeration. We don't like to exaggerate here on beyond real estate, but they're buying up more homes, a, a single individual, you know, some of the, the fun stuff that I like talking about with clients is, you know, moving up in house. We've talked on it before in previous, uh, episodes, moving up in house every, every year after they're, you know, they, they've now been there for years. So now they can get that, uh, primary occupancy and get better interest rates, all that, blah, blah, blah. That's a very slow, long drawn out process. And they're going to sell those smaller properties so that they can move up into bigger properties, whether that's for personal or they're going to sell those properties to do a different type of investing because they see that they have a lot of appreciation and equity built up. The individual investor isn't a problem. It's th there, there's no way that an individual investor can buy up, uh, here in Denver, for instance, 50% of the houses or the, the housing market here is non owner occupied. So when you're having a fair, crisis, but to be fair, that's not one company, right? No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so that's why I'm saying all big major companies that are coming in and swooping mm -hmm. in. Again, you said McDonald's, uh, different, different space. People aren't trying to, McDonald's isn't uh, nudging out the first time small business owner from a local shopping center because they bought the whole shopping center for McDonald's. No, but they're, they are able to position themselves to buy the best location because in real estate, location, yep. location, location. Right. Sure. So they have more leverage and they're the big boy on the block to say, I'm going to pay more cash for that corner spot than what the mom yeah. and pop shop can pay. So is yeah, that an unfair uh, advantage? No, it's not, it's not unfair at all. And it's, it's, again, it's a, it's a little different with that compared to the housing market. Cause yeah, the big boys, the, the people that have more money, they can buy those houses. They can put in over asking, they can say, Hey, I just want to, I'll pay in cash. And I just want this, uh, the owner of, or the heir to the Walmart fortune, uh, Robert Robertson, I think his name is Robertson, which is the most ridiculous first name ever. Uh, his, his parents tried way too hard. Um, but he bought four adjacent properties in Cherry Hills, one of the more affluent neighborhoods here in Denver Metro, uh, for 22 million. So he's probably going to scrape all four off all four properties and he's going to build one big one, but. Yeah, if you have more money as an individual, not a problem. If you're now going into a lower income neighborhood where you see a good investment opportunity because of appreciation and, and what you can see as a potential renting, um, cash flow, 
it's a little different if you're a large company and are able to buy up for, a, you know, and you're saying that's unfair. It's, it's not what it's not unfair as the law is written now, No, but it but is it, unfair to the people that do want to buy their first home. And now there's no such thing as a starter home because investors have already bought all these starter homes. And so now you're just looking at the mid to upper tier homes. I'll, which I'll, is, I'll play devil's advocate to that one yeah. for the fact that don't you think it's better though for corporations to come in because they can flip that neighborhood that is sketchy for lack of a better term, um, quicker than one house at a time. They can come in and buy an entire block and say, we're going to gut this thing. We're going to make it a more desirable space to live in. And now it's a trickle down effect. It's a domino effect of sorts. Don't you think that's a positive thing? Yeah, we've, we've seen how trickle down economics has worked for the past five decades. And I don't think it's going to, it's going to change now it's in the housing realm, uh, because all those homes were supposed to be as far as the ecosystem of housing, those were supposed to be the homes that a young homeowner can afford. It can be their first one. They, they here, can make here, that their here, property better. Here, here's the, but though, in there is when it's gang yeah. gang ridden, nobody wants to live and, and walk their dog at 8 PM when they know that that's the, the, what the neighborhood is known for. Right. So when the big corporation come in and sweep out a lot of that, <laughs> yeah. like, and say, Hey, we'll give you X for, for that house. And people are just like, you paid how much? Like that corporation paid how much for 20 houses? I mean, yep. don't you think that that's the silver lining of big corporations coming in to run down neighborhoods? Because again, an uh, individual isn't going to be able to afford to knock down 20 buildings or yeah, houses and just start the, new. The, the problem that I still see with it, with that though, is the working class homeowner doesn't exist anymore okay. they can't exist. Cause okay. that's, that, that's what it would always be like, uh, yeah, you know, um, Compton is a great example of this. Compton is not the same Compton that was wrapped about in the nineties. And that is not because large corporations came in and bought out everyone in their, in their mother, literally, it was, uh, people came in that were able to afford it and they decided to make that neighborhood better. So it was a local grassroots, Hey, we can make this community better. We're going to get the city involved more. We're going to report people. If you just bring in a corporation and you do those types of things, it's like, yeah, all the housing prices go up and you price people that, uh, are, are bad actors out of the market because they can't afford that anymore. Their police presence is too high, but naturally that, that, that comes in most circumstances, unless the city itself is dying, then, then we're at a completely different level. Uh, like, like, I mean. People can point to buying $5,000 houses in Detroit, but it's not because, because the, the gang activity was, was what was killing Detroit. It's like Detroit itself was dying because the audio auto industry and, and a myriad of other problems were, were taking effect there. So, so let, I, I wouldn't, yeah, let me, let me end with this question then. So 18% is what, what that New York times article said, right? The, uh, somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. So the norm, the norm is about 15%. And right now your argument per is quarter. huh? per quarter. So 15% of saying, all, all homes per quarter. Yeah. So per year we can say 15%, just over one in 10 homes are bought okay. by right. this corporation. Right. So if your argument is that's too much for a big corporation, it's too much of a share. What is, what is a good sweet spot in your opinion to be like, they should be able to exceed double digits, 5%. Like, what is your opinion on that? Yeah. Uh, for, for me personally, I think that only individual investors should be able to, um, and I'm, I'm talking individual as an LLC where you have one, two, three, I know you can have more people and there's always a way to game it, but large corporations like, um, I'm drawing a blank on which university I want to say Harvard has a few hundred million dollars that they're, that they use for their investments. Um, and they've been getting in the housing game. And so corporations like that, it's like you, you're just going to buy these, not for the purpose of, of making the neighborhood better yeah. or anything, but because you, you see a good bottom line, bottom dollar, and that's just not, that's just not what the housing economy can afford. Um, and that's not what, uh, we allow what we should be allowing. And, and to that point, even a lot of cities don't allow for a lot of, um, non-owner occupied residences. And 
That's why Fannie and Freddie have the, you can only have 10 mortgages through us. If you, if you own 10 properties, you, you know, you can have a mortgage for all those investment properties, but you can only have up to 10. Whereas if someone just comes in and buys with cash and they're a major corporation, they don't get to it's abide irrelevant. by the same rules as the rest of us sure. if, uh, as a single investor. So mm -hmm. that's where I would say even investors, single, single investors are being robbed of more investment opportunities where, you know, they can add better, uh, they, they can have long-term rentals. They can do stuff like that. Um, but not if someone like a large corporation pays cash and pays over asking and they're like, yeah, we'll just write out for this appraise this appreciation for the next 10 years. And we'll do short-term rentals in the meantime, and we're going to make tons of money off of it, but it did anything to that town, that, that, that neighborhood. And in fact, it just hurts everyone else, um, in it because also, I mean, think of the people in the neighborhood. It's like the, the if someone comes in and pays for cash more than what that house is worth, sure. It raises the house prices there. But if there's not a good trend of that, uh, or they do it just in one foul swoop and they just buy, you know, uh, five, six, seven properties in a neighborhood, uh, the way appraisals work is that you only look back in the last 18 months on average, generally. So after two years, house prices are now going to depreciate in that neighborhood, <laughs> which, which then just opens it up for even more of these large corporations to come in and do it at asking now or go below what they yeah remember so. buyers determine the selling price they do they do but if you see a declining market then you're from even a buyer's perspective uh and you see a market's now declining it's like is this a good place for me to because well what's a declining market buyer. well i'm just saying you have large corporation bought a ton of homes for more than asking in cash. Okay. Great. All those now exist in the NMLS yep. as past, um, as, as past transactions. Yep. That type of transaction does not continue to happen because all the people that were willing to be bought out were bought out. Right. The other people that stayed didn't want to be bought out, meaning right. they're going to live there for a few more years when they decide that they finally want to move out as if the, if they're. If, if the, the, the cities, uh, if the, if the value of the average home in that neighborhood has just gone about the regular, um, appreciation, not what we've seen the last few years that yep. are an outlier, but just regular appreciation. And it still doesn't match what that initial investor came in and bought everyone out at, at a price they couldn't refuse. It's now being viewed as a declining market. Cause you're asking for a property value. You're, you're trying to value your property at what your neighbor sold a few years ago, right? but no one's been able to, that investor that did that, that buyer doesn't exist. This is a, you know, working class neighborhood. People want to do at asking price, maybe a little bit higher if they have to, if sure. it's a hot market, but you as a seller are now not going to be able to get as much because you, instead of seeing this nice increase, slow increase. It's going to be a quick jump in property values and then a slow decline while it, while the rest of the market continues to do what it was already doing naturally, and then a slow increase back up. So it, it doesn't help the people that are there as much as it would initially seem, unless they're going to be selling, which they would have sold to that investor. So anyone that stays around is kind of screwed by these big investors coming in and buying out the neighbor. But homes have appreciated consistently. Yeah. So I don't think. This is one to worry people to say, God, if a corporation buys near me, I need to be careful because <laughs> homes are going to decline in value. I think it's just be, be mindful of what it, what is that purchase price and know what, what, know what the market's doing, right? That, yeah. because yeah, there's no guarantee that your home price is going to depreciate just because a corporation might've bought for over listing price, because a lot of people have been paying for over listing price for the past two years. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. In which but, case it uh, just sets the bar higher. Again. Also be, I'm, I just want to warn people, don't, uh, don't think that these last two years are now a, a trend that are going to continue to Correct. happen. Yes. So you're going to see things moderate. You're going to things see, see things decelerate, but yeah. unreal, unrealistic to think they're going to depreciate. So yeah. Yep. Well, I'll, I'll sum it up with this. I think okay. one of the best characteristics of the U S is the freedom of choice and, and capitalism and, and for what that allows. I think that being one of the best attributes is also one of the worst because it, it opens up a different can of worms that 
presents challenges like this exact one. Um, that depends what side that, uh, of the fence you sit on. Are you that corporation that says, I understand the value of real estate and we need to position ourselves accordingly long-term to, to be able to, to put ourselves in a situation to continue to have our money work for us? Uh, on the flip side of that, that takes out a lot of individuals. So it's an interesting one uh, for, for people to be mindful of and, and think through, right? And, and at the end of the day, I, I think it's a good thing for corporations to have that freedom to choose. Um, the reality is it comes at an expense. There's always give and take. So usually of the people with less money, that's, that's who the, that's who the take is. So yeah. <laughs> first time home buyers, you are, yeah, that's, you are the ones giving, yeah. you're the ones taking. Yeah. Just to, that is the reality. <laughs> yeah. That is the reality of those so, situations. Um, yep. so let's take a short, short break. And then we're going to come back with our business bookend and the book this week being Ninja Selling. Again, those of you in any kind of business space, that needs to be a book you are aware of. So join us after the short break.